What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, D-O-M-O, Dom Uto. Hold on, sorry. Make sure. D-O-M-O, Dom Uto. Back with another video. Today we're watching Charlotte Shan. Yes, sir. Alright, nobody gonna clap. Nobody gonna clap. Alright, bet. Alright, bet. Nah, 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 nah. I see how it is. But we're watching What If Goten Was Gohan's Twin. So we're gonna finish the story off. Right, we're gonna finish the story off part 13 and 14. Okay, so this story is really, really good. Shout out to Shout out to Shan. Let me know which I want to watch next. Next, all right. So, uh, this, um, the next story probably won't get started till like later, probably next week. Um, but if you're watching this, I should be at DreamCon or I should just be getting back from DreamCon. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I don't know where I'm gonna post this, but I, I'm somewhere in between the two. You know what I'm saying? So, if you at DreamCon, let me let your boy know. Come see your boy. If you see me, say what's up. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if, if y'all going or not. So, but anyway, let's get it. Like, power, comment, and subscribe as well, here, baby. There's not going to be any brawl. Without Frieza in the story, there's going to be no need for anyone to even try and find him. And none of the people on Earth have a desire to look for other Saiyans, too. So, naturally, next up, we'd go into the Moro arc. With Boo defeated, the seal on Moro ends up breaking. And after some years, he's finally able to escape the Galactic Patrol prison, regaining some of his magic too. Just to see if there's any chance that Boo is actually alive still, Maris and some Galactic Patrolmen go to Earth. But not just for that, but also because they might need some help from there. Earth does have some pretty powerful warriors, and even with Moro's magic, at least with their strength, they might be able to counter that. Maris actually knows of this because his brother's training three of the Saiyans there. And he's able to recruit Goku, Vegeta, and Raditz. Oh, Gohan shit. and Goten didn't even get the memo, but it's fine. They'll stay here on Earth. Immediately, there's going to be a pretty big change here, besides the fact that Raditz is in the crew. The big change is Goku doesn't have instant transmission, which means they can't go right to Namek just now. So it takes a bit longer for them to get to Namek, and by the time they actually do get there, not only has Moro already arrived on the planet, but he nearly has all the Dragon Balls. Goku, Vegeta, and Raditz immediately try and fight him, but midway through the battle, Moro gets a huge boost in power, as he regains his youth. Oh, the shit. battle barely even got to start before this happened. And now, Moro seems almost unstoppable. They don't even know how they would have fought him before, especially with his magic, but now he has the power to back that up too, not just his magical abilities. Of course, this oh, also he got a bunch of power from free as three well. Super Saiyan Blue. And after a tough fought battle, which is even tougher God because they don't have the Grand Supreme key. Kai there to help, the Saiyans have to retreat with the Galactic Patrol as Namek is destroyed, with the three Saiyans critically injured. The Galactic Patrol, of course, does heal them, but now they need to figure out their next course of action. The problem isn't Moro's strength, it's his magic. They don't really know how to counter it, especially because they didn't really get to fight against it like normal. It's going to be a completely different situation here. And on top of that, the methods for training are going to be very different. Of course, Goku might still try and go for Ultra Instinct, with Mayor's hell with him for that. But as for Raditz and Vegeta, Vegeta doesn't end up going to Yardrat here because he doesn't even think of that. But they have their own ideas too. Why not go back to training with Beerus? Video. If this I'm guy absorbs energy, shit. why don't they just give him energy that he can't absorb? What about using the power of a god of destruction? Hakai's in general would be pretty helpful here as an attack, but even more so against an opponent like this. If they use energy that's meant to erase people, how will he eat it? So the two of them go back to Beerus' planet to train under him instead of Whis, with Goku staying with Mayris training with him in his time chamber. All the while, Moro continues his conquest, which eventually leads some of the prisoners to Earth. Although, when they show up on Earth, it's not really that much of a battle. First, they encounter Piccolo, who's way stronger than them. Like, it's not even a contest. Right now, Piccolo's actually in the middle of training Trunks, and he even fights alongside Piccolo. Gohan and Goten even show up after sensing this, but they're already too late because Piccolo basically defeated everyone, except for 7-3. The only reason he's not defeated yet is because he was actually able to steal some of Piccolo's power, gaining his strength too. But with oh, Gohan shoot. and Goten here, he's going to have a pretty tough time. Amidst the battle, he is able to grab onto Goten's neck too, stealing his power. This gives him a far better chance, especially because now he'll be equal with Gohan, but he's still fighting four people, two of which are actually equal to him right now. This nearly leads to his defeat and destruction, but he's able to escape in the nick of time. Nah, Not even using Moro's power, don't be scared. Here, saving it instead, and wanting to preserve himself to go back to Moro, especially with the power that he's just gained. He's able to barely make it out of there in time. And pretty much like normal, this leads to the two months of training that Moro gives Earth. Thankfully, Earth already has some pretty strong defenses. And once they're warned about Moro too, they know exactly what to look for and what to counter. So, Gohan and Goten are pretty strong as is, but they're probably the biggest risk too, because more strength means more power for Moro to absorb. Yeah, true. Same goes for Piccolo too. The other prisoners won't be an issue at all, especially because they're training up some of the other fighters around them. And for someone like Android 16 who's going to be joining the battle too, he doesn't even have energy to take, which also leads to them recruiting 17 and 18 as well. But even with that, Moro might still be an issue, especially because they don't know how strong he is at the moment. His strength has definitely increased from what it was on Namek by now, which is obviously going to be a pretty big issue once he does show up. And while everyone trains on Earth, Vegeta and Raditz are on Beerus' planet still. 
Beerus doesn't really directly teach them, at least not like Whis does, but they are able to learn some stuff by just watching him. They start by practicing Probably pretty much did in the manga. and eventually working up to actually making real ones. As it is now, they think this power might actually be enough to defeat Moro if they could just land one Hakai that should be good. And if they just use that throughout the entire fight, there's no way he can counter it. He can't eat that energy. But even better, they feel like they might be able to unlock a brand new power, something beyond where they currently are, and something new to them. Well, they'd <laughs> probably use the same power as each other, crazy. but it would at least be different from Kakarot's, and it would still be a huge power-up like Ultra Instinct. Speaking of Ultra Instinct, Goku of course is continuing his training with Maris, and eventually unlocks Ultra Instinct Omen for himself, being able to use it at will now. But during the tournament, he never actually perfected Ultra Instinct. He only used Omen, and it was only at one point of the tournament. Which leaves him in a weird situation because he is stronger in base than he is in the normal story. But he's kind of behind on his training in terms of Ultra Instinct, so he does have more raw power, but he doesn't have the same technique here. At least, not just yet. But having Omen is still good enough. Right. Even if he doesn't know what the power of the complete Ultra Instinct feels like or how to access it, he still is on the track to getting it. And Omen will be good enough in the meantime. Two months pass, and Moro's crew eventually arrives on Earth, with the prisoners swarming the planet first. Gohan and Goten actually do have a new power to show off, but they don't really know if this is the best case to show it in. During their training with Piccolo, they were able to get a better control in their beast form, and they're trying to work on getting something even beyond that. Beast was never the final step for them. It was actually a stepping stone. They even mentioned it to others in the Tournament of Power. Now at least they have control over the form, but it still might not be too useful here because they're going up against someone that could steal power. Having too much strength might actually be kind of a downside, unless they're able to finish the fight really quickly. But also another area of concern is 7-3. Since he's dealing with stronger opponents this time, he's actually been upgraded a bit by Moro's crew, primarily so he could steal everyone's powers again. He aims for Piccolo first, trying to take his abilities. It's been kind of long since the last time he stole Piccolo's power, so he needs a little bit of an update here, giving him the regeneration and stretchy limbs of Piccolo. His next targets are Gohan and Goten. And since Piccolo's far stronger in the scenario too, this means 7 is going to get a really nice boost. Plus, with Piccolo actually being Kami in the scenario, he does have the ability to teleport around different places on Earth. Which is really helpful in battle. Oh, like this shit. That's good. Ooh, that's a good. Ooh, okay. Grabbing onto Gohan this time. They didn't realize he'd be able to copy those abilities too, but it doesn't matter. When 7 3 grabs Gohan's neck, he actually looks pretty surprised at the power he gained. He didn't expect it to be this explosive. Oh. But Gohan, Goten, and Piccolo get ready to fight him together. Even with 7 3 stealing that power, he's still defeated here. Partially because he's overpowered by his opponents, but also because he kind of overloaded himself with power. When trying to use Gohan's full strength, it basically short circuited him. There's a reason Gohan wasn't using it just yet either. It could run out too quickly, and on top of it giving more energy, that's not really worth the risk. So it kind of backfired on 7-3. The yeah, rest of Moro's crew is defeated relatively easily, which leads Moro himself to go down to Earth. Facing off against the people there, Vegeta, Raditz, and Goku still haven't arrived back yet. But the group here still has a backup plan. I just want to see the Moro arc, bro. Bro, just show us the Moro arc. I know R.I.P. Toriyama. R.I.P. Toriyama, bruh. This moral arc would be so fire animated, bruh. Fuck it. Nah, you gotta show the granola arc too, damn. Because I gotta see Ultra Ego animated, bruh. Oh my god. That's all I really wanna see Ultra Ego animated. And see Goku do Ultra Instinct again. That would be fire too. I don't really give a fuck about granola. You know, but still. Uh, yeah. That's all I wanna see, bruh. Yeah, but then you gotta show the Goku and Gohan fight in the manga. Damn, bro. Bring the series back, man. Damn. Plan. It's not perfect, especially because they didn't really have enough time for this. But during the training, Piccolo revisited some of the magic he was trying to learn. He is Kami after all, and did need to learn some different techniques, including magic, of course. Maybe the counter to Moro's magic is just more magic. Piccolo doesn't have a perfect mastery over this. He doesn't even really know how to use it against Moro in this case because they didn't really know what to expect. But he has practiced. Moro's magical prowess is way too much for Piccolo to handle, but he is able to mitigate it somewhat. Slowing down Moro's energy drain and completely stopping it at some points too, allowing Gohan and Goten to fight him together. Moro is pretty impressed with their strength too. At the moment they're just fighting a beast. And he compliments their strength. If he wasn't stealing power right now, well, he'd be defeated. They would simply overpower him if he didn't have his magic. But he could tell they're holding back. They're not using their full power because they're scared Moro would take some of it, which is very true, and it's very smart to fight that way, but it also means they're not going to be able to defeat Moro. It's a huge risk, but they will have to use their full power if they want to get rid of him. Even with Piccolo using his magic to try to mitigate Moro's magic, it's not going to be enough. No, no. But at the very least, this means everyone on Earth can actually hold Moro off for the time being, and it stalls him just enough. 
finding the perfect amount of time for Whis to arrive on Earth with Vegeta and Raditz in tow. Seeing Whis, Moro immediately tries to attack him and take his power. Although he's completely unsuccessful, Whis disappears the second he tries to and he would have dodged that attack easily anyways. But on top of that, the second he's about to land an attack, Vegeta and Raditz counter with their own. Moro then tries to take their energy but notices a strange presence coming from them as they're surrounded by a purple aura. They didn't expect to jump into a fight right away but that might be even better. It'll allow them to gain some power more quickly. Wasting no time, they reveal exactly what they've been training for. A new purple haired form, the complete antithesis to Ultra Instinct. This is Ultra Ego. With both of them using the same destructive power, hey. Moro can't steal their energy. He has no way to fight them. And on top of that, they're strong. Of course, Moro has a lot of strength for himself right now, but when he attacks them, they just grow stronger. It seems like their battle spirit heats up whenever they get attacked, and they just gain more power on top of that. This form is actually a really great counter to Moro's power. Their energy can't be absorbed, their attacks can't be absorbed, and they grow stronger as they fight. They actually completely beat Moro, overwhelming him, but Moro does have one what final fight. Thankfully he still has a strength left because it wasn't really drained here. Vegeta's not using spirit control after all, so he still has all of his power. So Moro easily is able to escape and go over to where 7-3 is. He's not dead, he's just short circuit. That nigga. And Moro's gonna make that power. He's about to swallow that nigga. Piccolo teleports everyone over there, but by the time they get there, it's already too late. Moro has absorbed 7-3, transforming himself too. It seems 7-3 collected a lot of power, so he'll have to be a little bit careful with it, but it would be fun to use some of it. Why not use one of Gohan or Goten's Holy powers? Holy shit. And he tries Damn. to summon their strength. Even if he can't steal energy from Raditz and Vegeta, it's not an issue. With this power, he should be unstoppable. Although just as the fight's about to resume, someone else enters the battlefield, apologizing for showing up a little bit late. He did get kinda lost flying a ship back here. It's Goku. He's not sure what happened with Moro, but he could tell that he's grown a lot stronger somehow. The rest of them warn him that they need to avoid the gems on his hand because it seems he got those from 7-3 as well. He was able to steal the power of Gohan and Piccolo. So on top of his magic, he's far stronger now and has way more abilities than before. And Goku can see Raditz and Vegeta are using a new power. He'd love to test that out in a battle later. But for now, they're going to have to fight together. He feels like with the three of them teaming up, it should be more than enough. Gohan and Goten wish they had some Batara on hand. Not for them, but for Vegeta and Goku. Or Raditz and Goku, any combination of those three. But for now, that doesn't matter. Goku powers up into Ultra Instinct Omen. He can't be hit this way, and he can attack without having his energy stolen. Vegeta and Raditz are also healed by Piccolo, growing stronger on top of the strength they've already gained. Oh, shit. Piccolo's gonna try to assist by negating Moro's magic. Meanwhile, the three Saiyans are gonna fight together with everything they've learned, using it to stop Moro in his tracks. Gohan and Goten watch on the sidelines with Piccolo. They really want to help out, but they know it's still risky, especially because Moro has their power now. But Piccolo says it might not be too bad. He's preoccupied with the other three and he can't steal energy from them. And if he tries to steal energy from one of them, couldn't Raditz or Vegeta just counter that? Actually, yeah, that's a perfect plan. This means Gohan and Goten can actually fight here. And if they try and use an attack, well, Vegeta or Raditz could just help. And Raditz even calls them into the battle, mentally communicating with them. He actually had the same exact idea. And not just that, but he could lend them some of his destructive power. They can imbue that within their attacks, which will make it so Moro can't absorb them. Mm. Gohan and Goten conserve their strength just in case, but they power up into their beast forms. They do have their own unique evolution on top of this that they're working towards, but they don't want to burn out too quickly or risk giving more with too much energy, even with the changes in this battle right now. With the five Saiyans all fighting together, Moro's actually struggling. He tries to summon more power, of course he's but fucking if he struggling. tries to use too much strength at once, he might overload himself just like 7-3 did. He already doesn't feel right. Is this really the power that those hybrid Saiyans have? But on top of that, even if he did have the capacity to steal more energy, he can't right now. Piccolo's kind of negating it, and at the same time, if he tries to, he might accidentally eat a Hakai. They know to counter him, but he might need to try it. It might be his only option. Goku then suddenly performs a weird technique on Moro, using a God Bind, telling Piccolo to hold Moro in place too. Don't focus his magic on negating Moro's magic. The two of them use their combined powers to try and hold Moro in place. And Moro acts scared, but he goes along with this. This is good. This leaves him open to absorb an attack. Gohan and Goten then stand together back to back, then flinging out a finger in front of them, each launching a Makanko Sapo. The two beams swirl together, heading right towards Moro. Again, he still acts scared, but he's actually confident here. He'll absorb that attack, and gain so much power that he can't be stopped. Mm -mm. It's not like Vegeta and Eratus can come close to him to attack, because otherwise, they might Hakai Goku or Piccolo. But he's fine here. He can't be defeated. He welcomes the attack. At the last second, he opens his mouth. But the beam suddenly flashes into a purple color. Vegeta and Raditz might not be near him, but they can still imbue their energy within others, passing into Gohan and Goten as they fire their attacks together. Goku and Piccolo quickly get out of the way. Oh, shit. The beam hits Moro, penetrating right through his head as the destructive energy spreads throughout his body, finishing with a brilliant explosion. I as like Moro it. I love defeated, it. But completely erased. 
But in his last moments, he saw something terrifying. It wasn't just the Hakai that was imbued within their attacks. Their attacks got stronger from their own energy. They transformed for a brief second. Even if he was able to absorb that power, he would have died. It would have been far too much for him. He would have been overloaded. He doesn't know exactly what he saw, but he spends his last seconds of consciousness in terror. All he knows for a fact is that he faced certain defeat in that moment. Gohan and Goten are a bit bummed out after the fight because they couldn't show their full power, but the other three Saiyans are pretty hyped up. They each got their own new strength and got to use it here. And they did get a brief glimpse of that power Gohan and Goten were using. Well, maybe some other time. Hopefully not though, because that would mean Earth's at risk. Maybe they could test it out on Beerus' planet sometime. So, following the moral okay, arc like I do in some of videos, there's not going to be a Granola arc here without Frieza. It's a lot less likely without Frieza there because the Heaters and Granola won't have the same motivation. So, that leaves Superhero as the final arc, essentially. Oh, but a lot of things here okay. will be different with that arc, too. Red Pharmaceuticals tries to recruit Dr. Hedo. And pretty much like normal, they try and get him to make Cell Max. Now, they never actually did see a perfect Cell, and they don't really have a clue about Cell either. But Magenta would still want an Android made, and it would be pretty similar to Cell Max anyways. For the sake of this video, it's going to have the same design as Cell Max and the same name as Cell Max. But for the record, realistically, it probably wouldn't look the same or be the same name. And the Android would have a ton of different data too, because it wouldn't be based on the Cell that we know, because they wouldn't know about Cell either. Not really a big deal, but just worth mentioning. Red Pharmaceuticals has been tracking Goku and crew for a while. They also had some footage of the battle against Moro, but not really too much. Although, Hedo decides to check the area where they fought. There might be something there even though it has been a few years. And much to his surprise, they actually are able to find something pretty interesting. With the Granola arc never happening, without the Heaters having the same motivations, Granola was never sent to Earth to get the data from 7-3. The whole reason they went to get him is because they wanted the info he had on Zuno. But here, 7-3 is actually left on Earth. Or at least, what's left of him. There's not really too much there, but there is a small chunk of him that Hedo finds. A small piece of his hand with the gem on it too. So, out of curiosity, he studies it. And he finds some great data on the fighters and everyone, including the absorbed data that 7-3 had. He's going to use this to make his new android. Also, he's going to try and use this for the gammas as well, because of course, he's going to create the gammas still. And Magenta's pretty- uh, Pretty excited. Sorry. This android's probably going to end up being pretty powerful. Some time passes as Hedo works on the androids, oh, leading us to where Superhero is supposed to start. The thing is, a lot of 7-3's data was used for Cell Max, rather than the Gammas, but Hedo tried to apply some of that data to them. Gamma 2 is sent out to find Piccolo, and he can't really find him anywhere because Piccolo of course lives on the lookout in the scenario. Mm. But there are times where he actually is on the surface, and Gamma 2 is able to find him at one point. Piccolo fakes a defeat here, and not because he can't beat Gamma 2, but because he wants to figure out who this guy is. Although, it doesn't really work too well because Gamma 2 and Gamma 1 both know that Piccolo has a higher form beyond this. So, Gamma 2 scopes out the area waiting to find Piccolo, and then he's finally able to locate him. Piccolo then showcases his full strength, and actually easily defeats Gamma 2. He did have some of the data on Piccolo, but it was from the Moro arc. Plus, adjusting the power to account for 7-3's data was easier with a bio-android like Cell Max, rather than these two who are purely mechanical. So, he actually does have a tough challenge here. It seems Hedo didn't make him strong enough to face Piccolo as he currently is. So Gamma 2 retreats, thing he won't be able to be tracked because he doesn't have a key signature. Piccolo quickly teleports up to the lookout, and from there he focuses, looking at the area where he fought Gamma 2. He could barely see it from there, but he could see that Gamma 2's flying back to their lab, keeping track of him, and finding the Red Ribbon army base. Gamma 2 retreated because he wanted to get help from Gamma 1, and he thinks that Hedo needs to upgrade them a little bit more. But this led Piccolo right to where the base is, so he's simply able to disguise himself with a clothes beam, and just teleports to where the Red Ribbon army base is, infiltrating the base, getting some more info on what's going on here. So Hedo goes back to upgrading the Gammas, with Magenta pretty pissed off that they couldn't do anything. He thinks they should just activate Cell Max, and Hedo disagrees. But as he goes to actually upgrade the Gammas, Magenta starts to plan his own thing, going to actually activate Cell Max. Before he does so, Piccolo teleports away. First going to Gohan's house. He's busy with some work right now, but when Piccolo fills him out on the situation, he actually is up to join here. Then he goes to where Goten Much is. Much different Gohan Thankfully, right here. Goten's also available to fight too. We never really cover this, but I'd imagine that he'd become a farmer kind of like Goku. Especially with Goku being gone, someone would need to watch the farm. Yeah. While Gohan became a scholar, Goten kind of likes this more. So this is his job, and he's able to basically leave whenever he wants, so of course he's up to join a fight. So now that Piccolo has both the twins with him, they can go back to the Red Ribbon Army base. And immediately, before they even go there, they could sense a pretty strong power far away. As Magenta activates Cell Max, the Gammas are busy being upgraded right now, and Hedo's pretty unprepared, but he immediately knows what's happening by the time it happens. Piccolo teleports the three of them over there, as Cell Max is unleashed. Gohan's pretty surprised that this all happened under their nose, so Cell Max would look different and have a different name, so they wouldn't even realize that it's supposed to be Cell, even though Gohan and Goten actually were the ones to fight Cell. But they put two and two together and realized that this is some sort of bio-android similar to that, and he's clearly on some sort of mindless rampage right now. 
And for that reason, Piccolo obviously wants to stop this thing right away. Gohan and Goten were hoping to have some sort of substantial fight here, but they do realize they have to end this quickly too. While the two of them here do enjoy fighting, they're also pretty serious when it comes to that, and they focus on mitigating danger and ending fights quickly, rather than just having fun. Piccolo goes into his full power, with Gohan and Goten finally showcasing their new strength. Okay. Now, they've had this for a while. They could have even used it against Moro, but it would have been a little bit more risky there, especially because they didn't have that great of control on it. But they're excited to finally use it in a real battle. What they it's before? the final evolution for each of them, based on their own unique trainings. The two of them actually did unlock the beast form together, and this is kind of an extension of that. For Gohan, the change is more noticeable. It almost looked like his Super Saiyan 4 form, due to that being his unique mm. evolution. Meanwhile, Goten's changes aren't really too apparent. His eyes change color and get an outline similar to Super Saiyan 4. Once more, he's still a bit bummed that he doesn't have his tail anymore. These two forms are their respective masteries over the beast form. With the beast okay, form basically being with the culmination a, of all their he with the power. Form. Goten's channels the power of Great Ape through his wrathful form, Great while Gohan beast channels form. the power of Great Ape through his Super Saiyan 4 form. This is the epitome of their strength, their final form by all means with each showing off almost animalistic strength. And despite the different looks, they are essentially similar. It's just the way that their Awaken was different. And for that reason, they each give these forms the same name. This is Primal Gohan and Primal Goten. Although, Goten calls his unique version Golden Beast, due to it getting a golden tint, and Goten golden wanting to differentiate it from Gohan a bit. The twins are the strongest warriors in existence. Piccolo doesn't even get a chance to fight. With them finally getting to showcase their full power, they go all out. And they end the battle pretty quickly, with Cell Max being defeated with relative ease. A little bit underwhelming for them because that battle Most was too definitely. short. Once again, their full strength gets snubbed. They don't get a chance to actually use it for fun. But thankfully, the Red Ribbon Army has stopped. Piccolo wonders where that one android went, though. He never actually got to see Gamma 1 either. Inadvertently, with Cell Max's explosion, that basically destroys the rest of the base. Thankfully, Hedo's barely able to make it out alive, and while he didn't get to upgrade the Gammas, he was able to take them too. And they escape pretty much unnoticed, terrified of what just happened. With Red Pharmaceuticals also being toppled now. But following this display of power, Somebody else was watching. Whis was actually showing everyone through his staff. Goku, Vegeta, and Raditz were training there off-planet. And even from all the way over there, yeah. they could sense this going on. And now they want a demonstration of that power for themselves, with them being summoned to Beerus' planet. They honestly don't know why they're here right now, but Goten's pretty excited when he hears that they're about to fight everybody. Honestly, Gohan's not really too sure about this, but it's gonna be fine here. They don't have to worry about any collateral damage and they can finally go all out. Okay. Goten tries to convince him too. They finally have a chance to do this. They've been waiting for so long. Plus, after that battle with Cell Max, it leaves kind of an emptiness within them. Doesn't Gohan want to fight too? Well, yeah, Goten's able to convince him and then he goes for it. But who exactly are they going to be fighting? First, it's going to be a 2v3 against Goku, Vegeta, and Raditz. 2v3? And Raditz not hold anything back with us. They're definitely not. This is also an opportunity Big for them there. to show off their full power. 3v3. By now, they haven't gotten any new forms or anything, but Vegeta and Raditz have gotten a better control over Ultra Ego, improving the power, effectiveness, and stamina of it. As for Goku, he's actually completed Ultra Instinct by now, so this will be a good test for him too. Piccolo came along too, but he's not going to get involved in the fight. He already knows what Gohan and Goten's powers like, and this is for the Saiyans to test that strength. But he's pretty confident that they'll win here. A 3v2 begins, and pretty much immediately they could tell this isn't really going to be fair. Not because they outnumber Gohan and Goten, but because Gohan and Goten overpower them. Right now they're only fighting their beast forms, and doing pretty well in fact. But the three other Saiyans want to see their full power. How could they force that out? And Vegeta has the perfect idea. He has been contemplating this for a while, and since he never got to do it, he felt a little bit left out. Although this time, Not he's going to have to leave Raditz out of Raditz has no clue what he's talking about, but he doesn't like it because of the fact he's going to be left out. And Vegeta's referring to fusion. Goku would agree to that, but they don't have Patara on hand. Oh, those things? We says that won't be a problem to get. Holding out a hand in front of him, generating two Patara out of thin air. And you know what? He even makes another pair, giving it to Gohan and Goten. Although they decide they're going to fight unfused first. Raditz guesses he's going to set this one out because he's not going to fight alongside a fusion. He knows he's going to be outpaced by everybody there. And he already has a chance to fuse the Kakarot. This will be fun to spectate, though. And after all this time, Vegeta finally gets to fuse with someone. Finally being Vegeta able to quell his wanting to fuse with a nigga is funny. the results are pretty interesting. Wanting to fuse, wanting to fuse is funny. Vegeta. The fusion of Vegeta and Kakarot. He asks the other two if they're really sure they don't want to fuse because he's not going to hold back here. Gohan and Goten say they're going to wait a bit. That's fine, then. Vegito powers up to his maximum strength. Although, it's a bit strange. He tries to use Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego, but he can't use the two of them together. They don't really work in harmony because they are pretty much polar opposites. So, he decides to start out with Ultra Ego. He can at least swap between the two of them, but just not use them together. Although, another idea he has is using Ultra Instinct with the power of Akai's. It might be a bit tough to do, but it would be easier than trying to combine the two forms. Gohan and Goten respond by showing off their full strength, with Vegito glad to finally be able to see this form. Raditz is stunned as well. He knew they had this power locked away, Ever since he saw them as kids, he knew they had insane potential like this. 
but this is beyond expectations, and he's saying Very this bad. as a god right now. Piccolo's not too surprised because he was the one to help him train for this. During the fight, Vegito constantly swaps forms, although Gohan and Goten are actually able to counter it pretty well. But Vegito could tell they're still holding back. So they show off more strength, but Vegito says that's not it. He doesn't care about their full power right now. He wants to see them fused. That'll be really fun. If they showcase their full strength right now as is, they'd be able to defeat Vegeta. But he wants them to fuse too? Vegito knows he'll probably lose against that fusion, Damn, but Vegito? it's gonna be fun at least. They rarely get the opportunity for this, and it'll be a nice show for Beerus. Beerus is pretty entertained too, seeing these three fighting and realizing how far above him they are. But he votes for it too. He yeah, tells the two twins to just go get his ass He says by now the two of them should have picked up on trace amounts of godly key at least, but they don't even use it. They never even thought about using it. And in their final forms, it doesn't seem like they're using it either. He wonders how far pure mortal strength can truly go, since they don't rely on that godly key at all. And the fusion between them will be the true epitome of that power. So, they put on the Batara earrings, and once more, Han Ten makes his return. Han Ten. Wondering what the form will look like for him when he transforms. Although, it looks pretty similar to what Goten had. Although, there's a slightly different tint to his eyes, and he has a tail, of course. So this is basically his own unique primal form. Vegeta looks on amazed, and slightly terrified. He's even trembling. To think that he's trembling of all people. Vegito, the warrior who's stronger than any of the gods of destruction. Even the two fusees that make him up. They're two of the strongest people in existence. But him especially, the fusion of those two, the one using Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego. He's That's trembling fire. at the sight of this mortal. This is going to be a ton of fun. But as you'd probably expect, Vegito doesn't really get an opportunity to fight. The two go in for a clash. Not to say. And Hanten kind of has to hold Not back to say and say kill everyone around them. Because even the shockwave might be too powerful for that. But there's a powerful explosion as the two of them clash. With Vegito landing a punch in Ultra Instinct, with a fist encased in destructive energy. It hits Hanten directly in the face, but he's completely unfazed. But Hanten's fist connects with Vegito's face. And with this one punch, he's knocked unconscious and unfused. With Goku and Vegeta falling to the ground, as Hanten looks below, smiling. You know, despite nobody being his equal, it still was worth trying out and was pretty fun. He looks over to Piccolo and Raditz, who basically have their jaws on the floor. Same for Beerus, too. That really was something. Goku and Vegeta regain consciousness. Vegeta's glad that he actually got to fuse, and they got to use that fusion's abilities. And even though they lost the fight, he kind of expected that. He wanted to really see the abilities of these hybrid Saiyans. And that was the best way to do so. Goku especially can't believe it because these two are his sons after all. Here he was training with Ultra Instinct, all these godly forms. Mm -hmm. And of course, Goku's power That shit ain't mean the damn loves thing. Instinct and loves using it. But to think these two would be able to do that without any godly forms at all, it's truly special. Ever since he first started training these two, he knew they had potential like this, but to think they're at this level, to think Goku still struggles catching up with them, he's proud of them and proud of that display of their strength. But he promises them he will catch up to them one day. And he hopes they keep working on that power. They the work fuck hard you gonna do, Goku? And they should work hard to maintain it, too. And they agree. They couldn't have gotten this far without their great teachers in life. With two of them, Piccolo and Raditz watching right there, and their most important and prominent teacher right in front of them, Goku. But even more important than Goku, the main driving force behind their strength is each other. Even with the great teachers around them, they wouldn't have made it this far without each other. And not just in terms of physical strength and training, but in terms of their mentality, too. The two brothers keep pushing each other to go further. If Gohan wasn't around Goten as a kid, or vice versa, the two of them don't know where they would have been. Mm. Sure, they probably would have been strong, but not on this level. And not just that either. With all the hardships they went through together, who knows how far they would have made it without each other. And that's the true reason behind their strength, their brotherhood. In a way, Goku can kind of relate because of Raditz. And although Goku never really thinks about it, Raditz still does kind of wonder how Bardock would react seeing them today, especially his grandsons. And these two definitely did live up to Vegeta's expectations. He always did theorize that hybrids would be like this. But who knows where they'll go from here in terms of strength. I mean, Vegeta, that, you still got battle, trunks, nigga. That will be the conclusion to this series. So what did you guys think about this series as a whole? Fire. Especially in comparison 10 out of 10. I'd love them niggas, them niggas are strong as fuck. I love it, man. Shout out to them. Shout out. Shout out to Shala Shan uh, for this video, man. Make sure you like, comment, comment, subscribe, man. And, uh... Man, let me know what y'all want to watch next, man. Make sure, let me know what you want to watch next below. And um, I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.